Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Jenny. I'm from Jenny Card Designs. Thanks so much for joining me today. My YouTube channel contains content that is intended to share paper crafting tutorials and inspiration with all of you. I hope that you enjoy. In today's video, I've got a fun project that I'm so excited to share with you. I'm going to be walking you through a slimline gift box tutorial and then we're going to make some envelopes and slimline cards. All right, so starting off with the slimline box, I've got two pieces of heavy base weight cardstock. You want to make sure these are good and strong cardstock because we want it to hold all of our cards. So we're going to start with the bottom of the box. Our measurement here is going to be is going to be six and a half inches by 11. So I'm just going to cut this down to six and a half inches. And then for the top of the box, our measurement here is going to be six and five eighths. And I'm just counting the eighths measurement, which is one little notch past half an inch. Okay, I'm just showing you the difference here. There's just a little sliver of a difference between the two pieces. We're going to save these little scraps here and we're going to come back to those later on. And I'm going to start by scoring my cardstock. So I'm going to pop the pieces into my scoreboard and I'm going to score at one inch on all four sides. So there's nothing complicated about this. If you've watched any of my videos before, I've made this box several times with different measurements. So today's no different. It's the same thing, one inch all the way around on both sides. And we're going to create this box for our slimline cards and envelopes. All right, so once this is all done, I've got my one inch scores on all four sides on both pieces. We're going to take some sharp scissors and we're gonna create some cuts into our box. So what I wanna do is just trim the score line on the shorter side. So we're just gonna trim that little score line up to where they intersect and meet. And then I'm gonna to come to the right side of that cardstock and cut a little angle out. So we wanna make sure that piece that's in the center is nice and straight, because this is the part that you're going to see. And these little flaps that we're cutting on the side are gonna get tucked under the box. So we're gonna do that to all four sides and then we're going to go ahead and crease all of the folds. So I'm going to bend all of these little score marks and use my bone folder to crease to get nice sharp creases. Once that's all done, I'm going to apply some adhesive to those little tabs. Now those little tabs are going to be folded under and adhere to the inside of the box. So I want to fold the tab down and apply adhesive all the way around on all four tabs. And then once that's done, I'm going to take these little corners and I'm going to line them up onto that larger flap there. And I'm going to create a 90 degree angle, making sure that these are nice and straight. And the box should fold together nicely. And if you have any overhang, you can just grab some scissors and trim off any of that excess. And now attach the other side. We're going to line those up, making sure these are nice and straight. You can use any sort of adhesive here. I like to use tape runner because it's quick and easy. If you want to use liquid glue, you could use that too. All right, so here is the bottom of our box. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing, no different, same sort of cuts and gluing and everything to the other piece of cardstock. And then these will fit together perfectly. That darker green lid is just a slight smidgen bigger than the bottom of the box, so then they can fit in together. Okay, and now here are my slimline envelopes, my slimline cards, and they fit perfectly into this box. And here you go, you have a beautiful gift box, and now your handmade cards will be ready to gift. So I have these couple of scraps left over, and I thought, wouldn't it be cute to make a little belly band using those scraps to wrap around my box? So I went ahead and I did that, and it didn't fit all the way around, so I used both pieces of cardstock. And then look at that. Doesn't that look so cool? It looks like a little belt. Like, you could really take this to the next level. I'm going to create a little bow and add it to the front, but I thought this would be perfect for you know, Christmas cards, you could make this box look like a little elf, or you could make it red and make it look like Santa and use black cardstock on the front of that little belly band to make it look like a belt buckle. I think that would be really cute. And I probably will do this at Christmas time. So stay tuned for that in the next six or eight months. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so I've just done this little bow trick that I learned from Gina K Designs. I'll link to that video in the description box down below to show you how to make that little bow with your fingers. Super easy. She explains it a lot better than I do. So I'll just link to the video rather than try to tell you what I just did. 
So I'm gonna grab some liquid glue and I'm going to apply that to the back of my bow. And then I'm gonna grab some reverse tweezers. Now my reverse tweezers are gonna hold my little bow onto the cardstock so that it doesn't move around on me. And then it'll adhere nicely and then I don't have to worry about it falling off. I'll just kind of fluff my bows so that they don't glue flat. Okay. All right, and now my box is complete. Let's move along to the next part of this project. So I've got a whole slew of products here. I don't use everything that I've selected, but I wasn't sure where I was going with this project. As many times my cards are ideas that start and evolve into something. So first up, I've got this Gina K Designs red rubber gauze background stamp, and then I've got this Gina K Designs Layered Heart Stencil. I don't end up using this. And then I've also got the Gina K Designs Luck and Love Stamp and Die Set. And then I have this really beautiful gold foil cardstock paper. I don't end up using this. I just wanted to share it anyways. It's really pretty. And then I've got some cardstock. I have some green 65 pound cardstock for my envelopes some 110 pound Nina Classic Crest Solar White for my card bases, and then some black cardstock for some layering. I'm going to pull in my Jumbelope template reference book. This is a book that I've designed full of templates for envelopes, boxes, tags, and so much more. So I'm going to go through my book and find some slimline envelopes. The box that we created earlier today is designed to fit these envelopes. So I have two styles of slimline envelopes. I have a business style and a policy style, and both of those will fit inside of the box that we made. So I'm gonna use this template guide and I'm gonna go through and show you how to create an envelope using this template. So I've got that green cardstock. This is a uh, recollection 65 pound. I'm gonna pop it in my scoreboard and across the eight and a half inch side, my first score is gonna be at two and a half inches. And my second score, at six and a half inches. And then I'm gonna rotate the cardstock one turn to the left and score at one and a half inches and 10 and a half inches. And I'm gonna do that a couple of times and create four envelopes for this card project set that I'm going to make. So, so far we've completed step number one and step number two. Now step number three is to cut off the four corners. So you'll notice that step number three and step number four, I always combine these together. I find it's easier so that you get clean, concise cuts. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. So this first cut that I've just made, that's where basically step number three is telling me I need to cut away. So I'm also going to use step number four and cut a little angle in the bottom of that envelope. And I'm gonna do that to both sides. So I'm gonna cut a little angle and then I'm gonna follow the score line and cut away. The bottom of our envelope should look like this. Okay, next up at the top of this envelope, I'm going to bring my scissors just a, like an eighth of an inch down below the score line and then angle my scissors towards that cross section where the score lines meet. Okay, so I'm coming up nice and close so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna angle my scissors and cut that away and then I'm gonna take my scissors and cut straight down the score line. Okay, and then you should do this to both sides. Again, coming about an eighth of an inch below the score line and angling my scissors into that cross section and then cutting that piece away. Okay, so at this point, our envelope should look like this. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna crease all of the folds. I'll use my bone folder to make sure I get good sharp creases. I find this 65 pound recollections cardstock to be absolutely perfect for these types of envelopes. It's nice and sturdy, but not too thick. So I kind of like that. So I'm creasing all the folds here. And now you'll notice on this envelope on the left and the right, there are two different size flaps. There's a smaller flap and a larger flap. The reason for this is so that we can adhere them together. So you want to make sure that the, the larger flap goes down first because if you put the larger flap down and then the smaller flap on top, that little line will be right down the center. So like the seam of your envelope that's visible will be in the center of the envelope. If you do it the other way, it's not gonna be centered, okay? 
I'm gonna apply adhesive to the larger flap, lay it down, and then fold the smaller flap over top and use my bone folder to press that adhesive in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and apply adhesive to the bottom of this envelope, press it all in, and there we go, envelope is complete. Now, just to clean this up a bit, I'm going to cut off any of that little bit of excess. I didn't cut that very straight, and it's kind of hanging over the side. So I'll trim that away. And then I'm going to take a little 5 8 of an inch circle punch, and I'm just going to pop a little finger notch in the tip of this envelope. I think it just gives it a nice finishing touch. Okay, then the last thing I'm going to do to this envelope is round the corners. I'm going to take my corner rounder, round the corners, and there we go, this envelope is complete. It's ready for our cards, okay? And now these will fit perfectly inside of our little box. I'm gonna go ahead and make four envelopes the same way. And now I'm gonna cut some card bases. So I've got that heavy base weight cardstock. Across the 11 inch side, I'm gonna cut this down to seven inches. I'll set that to the side. And then I'm gonna take this smaller piece and I'm gonna cut this down to three inches by eight inches. This is gonna be the panel that I do all of my stamping on. So this is just gonna sit nicely on the front of that card base. Okay, so my again, my panel is three by eight and my card base measures seven by eight and a half. So I'm gonna grab my scoreboard and I'm gonna score this card base across the seven inch side. I'm gonna put that in my scoreboard and I'm gonna score at three and a half inches. This will give us a final slimline card measurement of three and a half inches by eight and a half inches. And then my three by eight panel will layer nicely on the front of this card. So I'm gonna crease my folds and use my bone folder to give this card a nice sharp crease. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make four of those in total. And then this fits perfectly inside of our green envelope. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue working and make four of these card bases and four panels for stamping. So here we go, we've got everything inside of our box ready to turn these babies into a beautiful note card gift set. Okay, to get started, the first thing I'm going to do is take this gauze background stamp and I'm going to ink it up with some Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Ink Pads. I'll have all the colors that I use in today's video listed in the description box down below. Um, I don't know them off by heart because they're new to me. So I'm just inking up my gauze stamp and I'm just kind of stamping around the front of this card, making it sort of a distressed look, uh, making sure that I get all around the edges. You're not going to see most of this stamping, um, but I did want it to create some texture and I think I achieved the look I was going for. I'm going to freeze right here for a quick second. Now take a look at my four different card bases. You'll notice that the ink saturation gets lighter and lighter. I am brand new to these foam ink pads from Simon Says Stamp. I am a crafter that spends my own money on all of these things. I don't get free stuff from suppliers and things like that. One of the things I notice about the Simon Says Stamp ink pads is that they run out very quickly. They don't hold a lot of ink. And I don't like that at all because I'm gonna have to re-ink these. And as a Canadian crafter, it's gonna cost me quite a bit of money to re-ink these ink pads, you know, where as I've had my Gina K ink pads for years and I haven't had to re-ink them. Um, I'm not a fan of that. And I just thought I would just let you know that was the very first time I'd ever used that ink pad. So just a little Heads up there, um, if you want to invest in ink pads that have a foam sponge, you're going to have to buy the re-inker too. So keep that in mind. All right, let's go back to the video. I've pulled in my panels for stamping and I'm just kind of laying the stamps on my cardstock to try to figure out what I want to do. And I've got an idea. So I'm going to grab a couple of these four leaf clovers and I'm going to line them up onto my card panel. And then I'm going to wipe away the manufacturing residue on the stamp because these are new and I haven't used them before. And I've got a couple of those Simon Says Stamp ink pads. And I'm going to ink up my stamp with a medium tone green color. And then I'm going to close the door of my MISTI and press. And get that stamped. 
Okay, and then I'm gonna take a darker shade and I've got a blending brush. This is the Gina K Designs mini blending brush. And I'm just gonna tap some ink onto the center of my four leaf clover, just to give us some depth and dimension in those clovers. So they're not just like a flat stamped image. I think it just adds a little bit of texture and it makes them look a little bit more three dimensional. I like the way that looks. I like the color that I end up with after stamping these a few times. Okay, so I'm going to do that to all four panels. I'm just going to show you once because I'm making all the cards the same. So I'm going to clean off my stamp and then I'm going to grab another stamp from that stamp set. And it's a little, I think it's like a fern or, a, you know, leafy sprig, let's call it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to place that on the front of my card panel where I want it to go. And then I'm going to close the door of the Misty and pick that stamp up and stamp it with a lighter tone green ink. And I'm going to stamp that twice. Okay, once I'm happy with that, I'm going to move along to the last image that I like to stamp in this little grouping. And I've got the large sort of clovery branch. And I'm going to stamp this in my lightest color. I feel like this is just going to give us a little bit of a grounding area for those clovers so that they don't look like they're floating off in the middle of nowhere. And then this just creates like a subtle background as well. I really like the way it looks. So I'm going to ink it up with my lightest tone. I'm going to stamp it twice because it is so light. It almost looks yellow. So I just want to add that to, to color one more time. I think this one's called celery. It's really light and pretty, but I think stamping it twice creates a really nice color. So far, this card is turning out way better than I had anticipated. I love this look. When I got to this point, I was so happy with it, and I had a couple of more ideas. Okay, so next I'm gonna grab some black cardstock. I'm gonna create a little black layer to go behind these panels. So I'm gonna cut some panels down that measure three and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So I'm gonna adhere these to my little card panels and it's gonna give us an eighth of an inch border all the way around. So I think it just helps those colors to pop up off of that black cardstock and it looks really nice. Okay, so once I've got those all adhered to their black panels, I'm going to adhere them to these card bases. And then I can get a feel of where this card project is headed. Okay, so here we are so far. And I thought there's so much green. I love the way it looks. I need some color. I had a great idea. Inside of this Gina K Design stamp set, there's these little tiny baby cutie patootie, beautiful little butterflies. And I decided to stamp those in a rainbow of colors. And I started with that green and then to a yellow, to an orange, to a pink, to a blue, to a teal. And then I, in the teal color, I used the larger full butterfly from that stamp set. And look at this. What a beautiful, cute little rainbow of butterflies flying off, starting with that green and sort of tapering off into a rainbow. I absolutely love this. So pretty. Next, we need a sentiment. I decided to stamp the sentiments from this set, wishing you all, all of, I don't know what it says, all of the good things. Yes, final answer, all of the good things. Okay, so I'm gonna get this lined up on the door of my Misty, making sure it's good and straight. And I've got some Gina K Designs Black Onyx ink, and I'm gonna stamp this a couple of times to make sure I get a good solid black impression. And then I've got these beautiful Gina K Designs Frozen embellishments that I'm just gonna sprinkle along the butterfly trail. And those butterflies just look so angelic. They're just so beautiful. I really love the way this turned out. And then I've got a couple of those little gems in between the center of my clovers. And that's going to be it. This beautiful card project is complete. Now these cards are going to fit beautifully inside of our handmade envelopes. Even with the embellishments and the layers, everything fits in nice and snug absolutely beautiful. I love the green and the color in this card project. It was so much fun to make. So I'm just going to slip all of my envelopes and my cards inside of my box, put my belly band back on, and this is going to be ready to give away to somebody. You could change up the sentiment here to create a birthday card or a thanking of you or anything you like. All right. 
Here's a close-up look at our finished card project. This turned out better than I could have ever hoped for. Although I'm not a fan of the Simon Says Stamp foam ink pads, I am a fan of the colors, however. They're just absolutely stunning. So that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend it here with me. I appreciate the support as always. If you'd like this content here today, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Coming up on screen are a couple of videos I think you may enjoy. Have yourself a lovely day and I will see you in the next one. Bye!